had this um, IC7300 since April of 2016. It was probably one of the first uh, available. And uh, shortly after hooking it up and using it for a while, I noticed a problem on the scope. And I'd like to try to explain what's, uh, what the problem is. And I would like to find out if anybody else has experienced it. I know that if I sent it to ICOM, it would come back no problem found because it's such a, uh, a rare occasion when this happens. But uh, as you can see here, I'm on 40 meters at frequency of 7027 in the CW band. Now this problem occurs when I'm operating CW and in particular when I'm transmitting uh, using Morse code and uh, in this particular case I was going about 27 words per minute and uh, I'm keying the rig with an external keyer and of course that doesn't matter um, but anyway as you can see here uh, 7027 in the CW band there's Firstly, nobody there. This is in the middle of the afternoon. And as you can see on the scope, we have some very big, wide signals kicking up. And uh, here's what you hear in the speaker. I'm going to move the speaker over. Just hiss. And uh, just look at all this. Well, I can't touch anything. If I touch any of the controls, especially the frequency, it'll pop back to normal. And I'll do that at the end of the video. But that's, uh, that's the way it works. So, I spent some time using a signal generator trying to figure out what I was seeing here on the scope. And I finally decided that I'm looking at about 7200, uh, about in the center here. 77.2 megahertz is what we're seeing on the scope at quite a bit of gain uh, we are not seeing the frequency we are operating on and to prove that I connected another rig to the antenna and I'm going to turn it up and uh, you can hear what's on it and I'm going to turn up here a little bit for 7200 I'm looking for a, a stronger station, but uh, Unfortunately, there's a guy around here. You can see him right in here. Down here. There's a strong one up here, I wonder if I can get him. Yeah, hey, I think it's really 
in there, Scott. So he's probably on Rick's remote. So uh, I had. Okay, now the other thing I can do is uh, get the power all the way down here on the other ridge so I can transmit a carrier and uh, try to uh, zero in on that. Here he is, right, right there. And that is 7195. As you can see, the, uh, the peak right here moving. Unfortunately, it's too strong to really look good. He's on 7215. was really coming in. But now with the uh, with this extra panel, um, we're up over in the 500 pound range now. And so I, can, uh, I got the air going on it, the TV, and I got this radio. So that's 7215. Here's 7200. So we're seeing about the right bandwidth. I've got it set for... Uh, uh, about 50, 50 kc, 50 kilohertz bandwidth. So with the rig tuned to the low end of the CW band, I'm seeing the high end of the sideband portion of 40 meters. And um, I have put uh, various RFI filters on this, run different amounts of power, and it doesn't really seem to make much of any difference. Uh, and you never know when it's going to happen. It may go for a week before it happens again. Now, to clear this, it is so easy. All you got to do is almost anything. Just touch the knob. Like this. And it went away. And now we're seeing the sideband. I mean, the CW portion of the band as it should be. Of course, there's nobody there. There's a little bit of digital signal of some sort there. But, of course, the band being dead, now I can... If I try to widen the, uh, the bandwidth or do anything, it'll go back to normal. So it is a glitch. We'll call it the, the band scope glitch. And it does it on any band that I have operated on so far. It's very unpredictable. I've got a, a big choke on the, the power lead and on the antenna. I've put them on the USB, disconnected the USB and the serial port and, and everything. And still happens so there you go i hope somebody from icon will see this or if this has happened to you uh, i would appreciate a comment down below here and let me know if it's happened to you uh, also 73